Hello and welcome to the Monster Painter. This time I paint up some old miniatures that have been kicking around my painting table for far too long. Right, so I am trying to clean up my messy, messy painting table and I have decided to do it by painting one model at a time. This is going to take forever, but what can you do? Let me show you what I have recently finished. First up, we have this quirky metal reaper monster known as an Arachno Assassin. I recently acquired him in a lot of reaper miniatures off of the Facebook marketplace. He came with a vintage paint job, but one that looked a little flat and unfinished. So I added some washes and touched up some of the details and voila! He is ready to terrorize the tabletop. I love this series of models from Reaper. They are crazy, menacing, heavy metal monsters, and I'm always on the lookout for them. You see, the Arachno Assassins all have official stat blocks for my favorite game, Frostgrave. You can find these on Joseph A. McClue's blog, The Renaissance Troll, which is full of goodies for grave games. Check out the link in the description below. Next, we have these three piles of coins. They have been kicking around the table for years and years, and now they're finally done. I picked them up in a bag of junky toys from the thrift store. As I recall, they were part of some uh, toy treasure chest that would open up to reveal these little piles of coins. I discarded the chests as they were way too big, but I kept the coin piles. They are definitely not a great scale or uh, very well detailed, but I will use them to bulk out treasure hordes and add that all-important texture to a greedy dragon's lair. Here we have some classic Tyranid spore mines from Games Workshop's Warhammer 40k. I really like these models and have painted many up over the years. I have given this set a novel paint job because I am not planning to use them as spore mines for 40k. Instead, I will be repurposing them as that weird and classic mysterious monster of folklore, the Willow o' the Wisp, which is an ominous entity described as eerie lights floating about bogs and fens at night. With this kind of paint job, I feel these spore mines are a good fit and will get the job done. I've had these old crates for a good long time. I don't recall the name of the manufacturer, but they are resin models from some ambitious garage enterprise of the past. They came with a rather dark paint job, so I lightened it up and brought out the character and texture of the crates. Um, crates are always handy and fit into just about any setting. They make good objective markers or can just be texture in the background. Totally useful. Honestly, can you ever have enough crates for your tabletop games? On to these old geezers. They are sorcerers from the Hero and Monster expansion Crusade of the Forgotten for that venerable old dungeon crawler Descent Journeys in the Dark. They are suitably painted for this role, but that's not why I finished them. I mean, I haven't played Descent in half a dozen years, and I'm not planning to do so anytime soon. No, I got these guys done up so that they could play the equally generic evil magic users, the Red Wizards of Thay from the Forgotten Realms campaign. Um, and they are perfect for the job. They may also find some work as just about any kind of wizard in a Frostgrave adventure. Of course, when the Red Wizards of Thay travel about Faerun, they stay in a series of secret lodges and safe houses. But when adventurers travel about, they stay in a tent along the side of the road. That is what this little pup tent is for. It is a resin pour model from a small producer whose name I have long forgotten. It came pre-painted, but of course I was unsatisfied and livened it up a bit. In my mind, it is an essential piece of terrain. After all, if the hero's camp is going to be raided, you will need some tents to illustrate that camp. On to this terrifying light ordnance space monster. He is a phase three exoform brimstone from the Kickstarter Sedition Wars 
Battle for Alabaster. Uh, the box contained two of these hulking monstrosities. I finished the first one up a while ago and it appeared in an earlier video. I tried a slightly different color scheme on this one, but I'm not sure I got the biomechanical quality of the model down. I love the concept of a monster cannon, but I don't really love this model. Oh well, she's done now and that's good. As for Sedition Wars, well... Uh, just remember to playtest your games and copy edit the rules. Next up we have a lovely piece of dungeon furniture. This elegant grandfather clock is from Mantic's 35 piece gothic manor terrain crate. It comes ready to paint, although the finish is somewhat hydrophobic, so do not start with a wash. It makes an excellent bit of furnishing for the evil villain's chambers, or as texture for a haunted mansion. I also think it could have some sci-fi usage. I don't know how Missy travels, but Doctor Who's 1970s rival, The Master, traveled via a grandfather clock. This cute and comical little dragon hatchling was sourced from a dinosaur monopoly game of all things. Uh, the tiny little beast is more of an objective marker than an encounter. After all, a baby dragon fetches quite a high price in the fantastical marketplace. But be forewarned, her mama is not going to let you take her most valuable treasure without one hell of a fight. Here we have a very grim dark road sign. It's from an old Warhammer Fantasy Giant sprue that was given to me by a hardcore wargamer who was clearing out their closet. God bless him. It's seen a little table time as a fetish marker for the blood-marked barbarians in a scenario from the Red King campaign, which is what my monthly Frostgrave game is doing these days. Beyond that, I guess it'll show up anytime I need a grim and ominous waypointer. Our penultimate model is this handy little computer console by Reaper Bones. It's one of the older Reaper Bones. It's made in that white vinyl material, so it's virtually indestructible. The perfect objective marker for when your science fiction heroes are after that precious, precious data. Why, with the wonders of super science, this thing could contain an entire arcane library. Eons of well-formatted searchable data. Naturally, any sensible adventurer who came across this terminal would use it to play a couple of games of Doom. And finally, in celebration of the arrival of spring, we come to our last model. It's a Rage Drake from the Dungeons & Dragons board game uh, Wrath of a Shardalon. This particular Dragon King is known as a Yellow-Headed Rage Drake. A.K.A. the Dire Dandelion, a vicious enemy of monoculture, despoiler of lawns, enemy of golf courses, nature's own tenacious, ferocious destroyer of human perfections. Only the intense resolve from a battle-hardened landscaper has any hope of defeating its implacable fury. Hey. How do Canadians like to celebrate the arrival of spring? Why, by shoveling snow, obviously. Yep, that's right. It is a strange country, isn't it? It sure is. Now, let's watch a monster fight! Yeah, monster fight. Today's match features the Green Goon a slightly converted plastic Warhammer 40k Chaos Space Marine versus this blue floating nightmare, a metal tyranid spore mine. Where does victory lie? The dice shall reveal. Ooh, wow, I didn't see that coming. Well, at least it's not going to take a long time to play out. And there you have it, 
When no one survives, no one wins. Very, very questionable purchasing decisions. Very questionable. Remember to like. Comment. 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 Subscribe. And ring the bell. Ring the bell. Monster Painter.